Laker Nation. Laker Nation. What is going on? How are y'all feeling tonight? Everybody got all that anxiety, all that stress off you. Huh? It was a wild one. It was a wild one in Staples Center, and it's a lot to go over. A lot to unpack. I'm going to introduce a new segment in this game. I think it's warranted. We got the victory. Listen, Laker Nation, what's going on? My name is Derek James and I am the host of the Film Room Podcast. We are about to go over a lot in this game. The Lakers got the dub. 126-123, Lakers. Yes. I had a good time tonight. A lot of tweets was coming out. I'm on Twitter heavy now during the game. And a lot of great tweets was coming out. I had a great time laughing, reading, watching the game. Whew, this was a nail biter. All the way to the finish. All the way to the finish, it was a nail biter. They went back and forth. Thought we had the game won in the fourth quarter. But a lot to unpack. A lot to unpack. Listen, Laker Nation, I'm here for it all. I am here for it all, and we about to go into it. And that's coming up next in the Film Room Podcast. I was just telling my four YouTube subscribers that my daughter hates me right now. My daughter hates me. She called me all kind of curse words. No, I did not. Said she wanted to blow up my house with me in it. All kind of nasty, just nasty, dirty, grimy sh**. You know what I'm saying? My daughter says she wanted to duplex me into the concrete. What does that even mean? (laughs) Laker Nation, I am so happy tonight. Even if we, listen, Laker Nation, even if we had got the loss, even if we went out with an L tonight, I would be happy. And you know why? Because we showed effort tonight. We showed fight. We put up a fight. You know what we showed tonight? We showed that Mamba mentality. Do whatever it takes to win. I'm here for it all. We gonna talk about it. That's the reason why I had to honor this this dub with my Mamba jersey. You know, I got Gigi on my back right now. Laker Nation, this was a great win. I don't break this out for just anything. You know what I'm saying? This is very special to me. I got two daughters. I'm a girl dad. To the heart. So this means something to me. But Laker Nation... Y'all made me want to put this on. I felt like it was warranted. Listen, this game was intense. We put up a fight in every quarter. We played for a full 48 and then some. And then some. Laker Nation, y'all impressed me tonight. This was a playoff basketball team without LeBron and half of our... (laughs) And half of our cast against a great Hornets team. I know they're young. I know they still haven't proved themselves yet in the playoff run. But this is a great Hornets team. This was a great win for us. And anybody that don't say that is crazy. They want to base it on the Hornets being no like sorry Hornets ain't even the 500. Listen, this is a great Hornets team. And we stuck in there. Despite all of the things that are going against us. 
these crazy ass refs. Vogel didn't Vogel us tonight. You hear me? It was a good. <laughs> it was a good night. And listen, tonight I'm gonna be talking my. Vogel didn't Vogel us tonight. Russ almost rusted us tonight. But we came through. I tweeted this before the game. I even texted my pop, said, listen, I just seen Brody on the bench before the game. He looked at ease. He looked at peace. He going to have a good game. <laughs> and he really didn't have a good game, but he got a triple-double. That's crazy. He didn't have a good game looking at an eye test. He didn't have a good game but got a triple-double. That's Russell Westbrook, ladies and gentlemen. That's not going to be pretty. But we got it done. And he got it done. And I got to get a game ball. I got to start off who I give my flowers to. Who didn't even get to see the ending of the game. Probably in the locker room. Yep, you guessed it. I got to get a game ball to Rondo. Rondo came off the bench and sparked a run for us and sparked a fight and sparked the fear in the Hornets team. I mean, he just came in just everywhere. Defense, offense, lobbing, making plays. Listen, Rondo is that dude, and I've been saying this. Me and my auntie talk about this a lot. Hi, auntie. We talk about this a lot, how we're so glad that Rondo was back in the mix. Because we need a Rondo. We need a guy that's going to be intelligent enough to run that point the way it's supposed to be run. And there's only two that can do it. That's LeBron James. And that's Rondo. Sorry, really need that point. To be fair. And that's no knock on anybody. That's just how much they bring to the game. Did you see Rondo with AD? Excuse me. Did you see AD with Rondo? It's a completely different AD. Completely different. It's the Pelicans AD. He takes them back to that, to that time. He gives a head nod and he goes after it. That's that Rondo and AD mix. Why we have Rondo coming off the bench, I don't know. When LeBron is out, this is my take. When LeBron is out, Rondo needs to run point with AD. Because those two together are crazy. Those two together are crazy. And I ain't saying that Russell needs to come off the bench, but somebody does. Because Rondo needs to be in when LeBron is out, period. That's the only time we're going to get AD being the AD that we know and love and know him to be right out from the gate. Right from the gate, if you don't have Rondo in with AD or bring Rondo in extra early, then AD is going to get off to a slow start. Because Rondo can't... Sorry, Pac. I'm knocking down Pac. Y'all like my Pac? AD came in with Rondo and was balling. He had a slow start. Somebody tweeted, does he still have this stomach, stomach illness? <laughs> It was a great, great win. I want to break it all the way down, but I just can't stop talking about how much effort and energy I've seen. The walk-off interview of Carmelo, he hit it right on the head. He said, this is how we need to play every night, with effort and energy. And that's what we've seen tonight, effort and energy. And it all starts with the number one. It all starts with Russ. And it didn't start with Russ, so Rondo picked it up. Rondo seen where we needed to be. He seen the missing piece and said, you know what? Let me go in here and show him. Rondo came in and seen the missing ingredient. He seen it. And he said, I'm going to show you what we do here at the Lake Show. This is the Lake Show. This is how we run it. Defense to offense, offense to defense. And it goes back and forth like that. Rondo came in and said, you know what? I got a tennis stat. I got to go back and forth on both ends. I got a tennis stat. 
I got to play defense and offense. I got to pick up that energy on both sides. And he did. And you know what? Everybody followed suit. Everybody followed suit. Monk came in balling, finally got some run. I've been telling them. I've been telling them. You got to let Monk go. You got to take the leashes off, Monk. You got to take the, the cuffs off, Monk, and let him go out there and ball. The kid is a star, and we ain't even seen half of it yet. Monk is a beast. And if we keep him cuffed and locked into this role, he's never going to do what we need him to do. Same thing with THT. Until we took off the cuffs, we didn't even know what THT was. Leave it to Vogel, THT would have been sitting there rotting on the bench until he came in that preseason game and said, you know what, you can leave these cuffs on me and you can leave these leashes on me, but I'm going to come out here and I'm going to show my fans what I'm like. And he did that. Shy town Put it down. And ever since then, THT has been getting run. Hey, listen. Vogel didn't Vogel us tonight. I got to give him his props. I got to give him his flowers. Because Vogel didn't Vogel us tonight. He seen certain things and still let it go. He almost did in that fourth quarter by taking out Mello when he was scorching hot. I mean, why do you do that? Vogel, don't Vogel us, man. If you see the dude is hot, I mean, forget about his minutes, bro. Let him ball. And that brings me to my second person that I got to give the flowers to. Yup, you guessed it. It's Mello. Staples Center Mello is a brand new animal. And everybody knows it now. You have been warned that Staples Center Mello is a different one. They say he turned back the hands of time. I said, nah, ain't no turning back no hands of time. He been had this in him. He's just been letting it loose for y'all. That's special for y'all. That's special for us. Those who rock and rep the purple and gold. That's special for us. He's putting on that show for us. See, he walked in the Staples Center and he felt that Kobe presence. You understand? He felt that Kobe, that Mamba mentality presence and put it on. And every time he in Staples Center, he wearing it like a coat. That's hoodie. Mello was outstanding. Outstanding. I mean, defense, he's getting deflections. His legs are stiff as boys. <laughs> Mello's legs are still stiff as boys, but he's out there deflecting. <laughs> And he was knocking down shots. Mello, you were outstanding tonight. Your effort, your energy, everything you have been bringing to this Lakers nation, everything you have done in this purple and gold so far has been outstanding, bro. We will not forget it. And even if you do this in the playoffs, G, I'm with you. I'm riding with you. You know what I mean? Because the love you get at Staples Center is undeniable and it's, and it's definitely, definitely worth it, bro. You definitely earn that. Since day one, they've been showing you that love. Me too. From way over here at home. I've been showing you that love and say, you know what? Don't talk about the big three over here with us. Y'all better put some respect on Mellow Name. It's the big four out here. It's the big four out here. Y'all forgot one. And that's Mellow. That's Staples Center Mellow. I got to give him his flowers. He was incredible. He was incredible. Listen, if Mellow was playing like this every night, LeBron can rest. Are you crazy? LeBron can rest with Mellow playing like this. AD playing, scored 30. LeBron can't rest with that. LeBron can't rest with that. AD has got to do more. 
But AD has already given a lot. No, listen to me. I'm not saying that AD needs to do more, but I'm just saying in order for LeBron to rest, we needed more than AD. We needed somebody like Melo to come in and be Melo at Staples Center and show us what time it is. Because that's momentum. AD doesn't give us that, really. Yeah, he may get us a dunk. He may get a lob. He may get a three. He may get a nice jump shot. But what Melo brings is something different. What Melo brings is something different. He brings the energy. He brings the vibes. He brings all of it with him. That's mentality. Okay, now freeze it right here. Okay, so you got DeAndre Jordan at the top of the key, signaling his head for Avery Bradley or Anthony Davis to move or do something. Everyone is standing still. This is in the first quarter. We have nine points, ladies and gentlemen. And there is already on our offense, no movement. You got Kent Bazemore standing there with his hands up, just waiting for the ball or a pass. You got Brody standing on his right-hand side, just standing there waiting for him. Now look at the defense. This is what I talk about when I say our offense is so easily to guard. And it's so just easy to pick apart. Now, however, we do get a basket out of this play. But the movement is so stationary at the start of the ball game. We should be moving, cutting, moving the ball side to side. But instead, we have DeAndre Jordan at the top of the key stuck and about four eyes on him. Actually, eight eyes on him from four bodies. Okay, and Miles Bridges is looking at Avery Bradley because he knows exactly where DeAndre Jordan wants to pass to, and he's just waiting to attack. Okay, now, however, we do get a bucket out of this play, which is a really nice ran play. But you can tell it wasn't drawn up this way. Okay, now we're going to unfreeze it. All right, so now Gordon Hayward puts his hands up. Terry Rozier reacts because he knows he's trying to cut off the pass to Westbrook. Westbrook makes a nice cut. Now their, their center reacts. And now DeAndre has a wide open path to the hole. Slams it in. But this wasn't drawn up. This was reacting. And this is too early in the game for us to not have a play ready to go. The box score reads like this. Anthony Davis at the five, played 43 minutes, scored 32 points at 12 rebounds, four assists, three steals, five blocks. Are you kidding me right now? AD was outstanding too, and I didn't even, you know what I mean? That's how great Mello was. That's how great Rondo was. I didn't even get a chance to even introduce AD. AD was outstanding. Had five blocks, three steals. I mean, his defensive efforts tonight were just outstanding. Every night has been outstanding. And he don't get enough credit for that because we're looking at points. Oh, he should be scoring. The dude is 10 feet tall. <laughs> right? But what he does on defense is just incredible. He's the defensive leader on this team. I've been saying it for a while. He was 13 for 25. He was 52%. A lot of those was jump shots. He was broke. He was bricking, bricking, bricking all over the place. But when he got to the paint, listen, AD was AD. He had four fouls, and he had four turnovers. Russell Westbrook, we're going to skip him for now. Let's go to the four. Our, oh, no, I'm sorry. A AD was the four. We're going to go to the five. DeAndre Jordan. DeAndre Jordan came out balling. He played 10 minutes, scored 10 points, and had eight rebounds in 10 minutes. Are you kidding me? And people are talking about trading DeAndre Jordan. I get it. He's been off. Let our players come into their own. Re relax. It's been 11 games, and I get it. I talk about players all the time, too. But we got to give them their own space. We got to give them their own room to show and grow and learn this system and play with this new team and everything. They also have to figure out where to be, how to score. Not just our stars. 
I get so upset with that. We want to trade everybody as soon as they have a bad game. It's been 11 games. Relax. And this is without all of our people, all of our pieces. This has been 11 games without all of our pieces. LeBron has missed probably half of them. Our main star. DeAndre Jordan was incredible. He played 10 minutes, scored 10 points, and 8 rebounds. I mean, if Reeves were doing that, y'all be saying he was the GOAT. <laughs> but he came in balling. He was 4 for 4. He came in with the energy in the first quarter, and he gave us that spark in the first quarter. That was DeAndre Jordan. He started off the ball game like that. People said he turned back the hands of time. I'm like, no, these guys have been, pl they play like this. Our guards have got to show this because they can't get into the game if our guards can't get them the ball. So DeAndre Jordan has been incredible for this ball club. I do not want to trade DeAndre Jordan, even if he has an off game next game. I will not trade DeAndre Jordan because what's on the other side of that, who knows? DeAndre Jordan is, he's good. He'll be good for this ball club. And I'm sure LeBron loves him. When he's in there with LeBron and LeBron is dishing, I mean, LeBron, it, pretty much every game that I've seen where DeAndre starts and LeBron starts, DeAndre Jordan is his first lob. I mean, it just starts off the game. Kim Bazemore at the three. He played 14 minutes. He didn't score any points. He had two rebounds. He was 0 for 4 from the field. He's bricking layups. He was 0 for 1 from three point. Did he affect the game? I would have to watch a little bit more of the tape without my emotions in it and see how much he defended. Um, I'm not really going to harp on Baysmore too much. People want to trade Baysmore. I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing my guy Big Perk talk about um, Reeves over Baysmore, and I, I don't. I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that at all. I think the Rook needs to, to be in the Rook's place, to be honest with you. So I don't agree with that. Even though Bays hasn't been playing great and he hasn't been knocking down shots at all, I don't agree with that. Avery Bradley, let's go to our two. He played 23 minutes, scored eight points, had one rebound. He was 3 for 8 from the field. That's 37.5%. He was 2 for 5 from 3. He was 40%. He knocked down some good shots. <clears throat> I can't say much about Avery Bradley. I love Avery Bradley. I've seen somebody tweeted that uh, his scoring, his shooting has been a pleasant surprise this year. And same thing. I disagree. Uh, when we had Avery Bradley before, he was, he was balling. He would put up shots. He had great games. You know, he was almost automatic that year. And I still think he is. He makes the right cuts. And he gives us buckets when we haven't been scoring points. And kind of starts us off too. So, I rocks with Avery Bradley. Salute you. Westbrook. Westbrook played one. He played 41 minutes, scored 17 points at 12 rebounds and 14 assists. He had three steals, zero blocks. He was oh, uh, he was 5 for 15 from the field. That's 33.3%. He was 0 for 2 from 3. That's 0%. Also, AD was 0 for, sorry, Westbrook was 0 for 2 from 3. That's 0%. And then AD was 0 for 3 from 3. And that's also 0%. So three of our starters were at 0% from three. Four of our starters. Our shooting has been terrible. Listen, if Melo, if Melo wasn't on our team, I don't know what we would do. Because our shooting has been atrocious. And while we continue to stand behind that line and embarrass ourselves, I have no idea why. Guess they like it. Uh, we are not the Houston Rockets. And none of y'all out there is Steph Curry. So stop it. Okay? That was our starting five, ladies and gentlemen. But here's where it gets good. Here's where it gets good. Our bench, what we have built with our bench has been incredible. With Carmelo Anthony, with Rondo, with Austin Reeves, with Monk, with Wayne Ellington. Let's go into the box score. I'm going to mellow last. 
Let's start with Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard played 15 minutes, had four points, nine rebounds, one assist, one steal, one block. Dwight Howard has been balling, and he's been playing better defense lately than offense, which tells me he's trying to get back on Vogel's good side. Because <laughs> you know Vogel. Vogel! Defense, defense, defense. So he's been trying to get on Vogel's good side to get back in that rotation after that AD. Please don't trade me. Rondo. Rondo was in the game 12 minutes before they bamboozled him. Okay? He was in the game for almost 12 minutes. He scored zero points, had one rebound, and eight assists. One steal, one block. Rondo was incredible, man. Rondo got... This game won for us. Because if he didn't bring that energy that he brought, then we would still be looking like zombies out there. It doesn't show up there in the box score. It shows up here. Rondo, you are outstanding tonight. Salute. Hats off to you, my G. Malik Monk played 17 minutes, scored 10 points. He had one assist, one steal. He was four for eight from the field. And two for four from three. He had a half court buzzer beater. I mean, he was outstanding. If we don't release Monk and let him ball and let him be him, then we'll never see what this team can really be. He is so handcuffed, y'all. I don't know if y'all know. Go look at Malik Monk's highlights from Hornets. Tell me he can't do that with this ball club and even more. You see flashes of it. You see flashes of it. That's all I'm saying. Wayne Ellington. He played 23 minutes, scored eight points, had two rebounds. He was two for three from the field, two for three from three, which is 66.7%. Wayne Ellington bought out tonight. That's a lot better than what we've been seeing from our three-point shooters, and all this is off the bench. Malik Monk, 50% from, I'm sorry, yeah, 50% from three. Wayne Ellington, 66.7% from three. Only one that that really didn't do great from the bench for three was Austin Reeves. And Rondo only shot once. So Austin Reeves was zero for three. From three, he was zero percent. But Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony played 36 minutes, scored 29 points. He had three rebounds, one assist, one steal, one block. He was nine for 13 from the field. That's 69.2 percent. And he was 7 for 10 from 3. That's 70%. Mello, I don't know what to do with you, man. You got people tweeting that this is Mello's team, and I feel some kind of way. Because that's how much I am a stand for LeBron James. I'm from Akron, Summit County, Westside. And so is LeBron. There's not... A lot of hope that we get from Akron. But you have been it and you have been it in a major way. You have put Akron on the map like no one ever will before you or ever will after you. I believe that wholeheartedly. What you have done for the city of Akron, for the city of Cleveland, and for the state of Ohio is unmatched. But Melo was in Staples Center running your name up, bro. Melo has been balling and making people believe that, hey, listen, all we need is Melo. That's how great he's been playing. But I need you back, Bron. I need you back. I need you to let people know that this is still your team and you still run. Okay? So heal your leg up and your tummy and get back on this court. Okay? We need you, big bro. The sheer excellence of what I saw tonight was incredible. Like I said, it's just the effort. Even if we took a loss, I would still be this hype. I would still be this happy because we showed effort. We showed fight. We showed poise. We showed resilience when we needed it. We showed everything that we needed when we needed it, which was great. I even love the technicals. Talk your bro. Get that out. Carmelo yelling at the ref. Who the f*** are you talking to? Who are you yelling at? Oh, it was it was all there. It was all there. That's the energy, though. 
That's the effort. That comes with playing that high competitive basketball. When all your emotions are in it, you've been losing. People been talking a shit. And all you want to do is get back in there and say, listen, that's one game. That's just one game. We got plenty more where this comes from. And better. Wait till Trevor Ariza get out there. Wait till my boy THT get out there. Listen, we got some dogs that's coming back that they ain't ready for. Think about who's coming back. Trevor Ariza, Kendrick Nunn, THT, and LeBron James. That's four players that's coming back. With everything that we've seen on the court today, are you kidding me? Down to Austin Reeves, the rookie who's been playing outstanding? Oh, we gonna have a problem. If you think Vogel's rotations are up now listen it's gonna be a long season because he's got a lot to deal with he's got a lot to see monk hasn't even been getting playing time for crying out loud you think we got a problem now with rotations and lineups listen whoo